you know, you might be sour that it's not the real Jason, but I think it's an awesome movie. I think it's underrated. And I think I it, still think it's a great movie. I think it's comedy, but brutal at the same time. I like the story. I like, you know, this little farm you send all these troubled teens to and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We still get Tommy in it. Part six is my second favorite film in the franchise I love. This is what I call the gothic Jason. This is what I call the gothic type of feel to it. You know, he had that Frankenstein bringing back to life type of deal with the lightning bolt. Uh, I, I love that shit. It reminded me of old gothic Frankenstein films. And then you had Tom Matthews picking up Tommy or playing the role of Tommy. I think he does an amazing job. Which, by the way, check him out in Never Hike Alone, Never Hike Alone 2, uh, fan-made films. Great movies. Great movies. Fan movies. Um, and for free on YouTube. Just yeah, check them out. They're, they're awesome. We just met Douglas Tatt, who um, you know was, was in it as well. Uh, anyway, uh, you, you get part seven. You get the telekinesis girl, who some people dub this uh, Jason versus Carrie, which is pretty yeah. funny. Uh, interesting take on it. A little um, different. A little uh, different. Not the, bad, though. No. The death scenes in this movie were fucking uh, really good, too. This is the first film with Kane Hodder. Uh, this is the first time uh, you get to see Kane Hodder dub the Jason. Um, the the sleeping, the classic sleeping bag scene was in this film. Um, you know, the, the axe to the head, throw him across the fucking room behind the television. Yeah, it was fucking um, brutal. You had fucking, uh, the doctor was uh, fucking Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you get to part eight, which, you know, gets shit on, like you said, and we will defend this to the day I die. Uh, I look at this one the same way I look at uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. I've just accepted the fact that people are just not going to like it, and that's fine. And I will continue to, instead of trying to convince anybody that, that they should like this. I'm just going to tell you why I like it from now on. And I've done that over and over and over and over again on this podcast. So we get to Jason goes to hell. Uh, I'm like you with it. It's my, it's my least favorite film of the entire franchise. It does have great kills. It would just be a whole lot better if it was actually, um, Jason doing the kill. I, I will agree with you. The look of Jason, like a lot of people can um, complain that this has the lack of Jason, but even if it did have Jason, it doesn't look all that great. He he basically steals Michael Myers's jumpsuit in the film and his fucking, I, 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 uh, I kind of appreciate the, the, uh, you know, his head is growing around the mask yeah. And uh, it, it brings it back to this, oh, well, he's a humongoloid or whatever they wanted to Mongoloid. call him. It just didn't look right. He looks like some space alien. <laughs> it looked like a sheep. Yeah, he looks like a fucking sheep with a mask on. He looks like a busted can of biscuits. He but, looks like when the fucking biscuits go, like you're making muffins and it rolls over the fucking tray. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because there were a lot of little gems in this, like the Necronomicon, or however you say Necronomicon. it. Necronomicon. Oh, this Necronomicon is a book. Nec nec la, 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 la. Uh, this is also where you get the uh, tease for Freddy vs. Jason, too. Yeah, you get the claw coming from the ground, and that's cool. Uh, Jason X is a B-rated fucking movie with, that is fun, funny, and has good death scenes. So overall, I'm fine with it. It's yeah, one fucking, of my favorite death scenes is in this movie. It's fucking ridiculous. The Jason X uh, Super Jason is fucking ridiculous. But you know a lot of people like the way he looks? Well, I do too. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I'm I'm okay with it. And, um, you know, I appreciate that you really enjoyed the 09... Um, I'm I'm not going to call it a remake. It's only a remake in title. That's all. It, that's all it is. Kind of, yeah. It's honestly. Uh, that's all it is. Is it's a, if it was um, a remake, it would be Mrs. Voorhees. True. That's the way I look at it. But anyway, it was a brutal movie. I enjoyed it. I went to the theater and saw this twice. I saw it with you and a couple other people. Um, I enjoyed this film. I liked it. I uh, I'm like you. I'm sad that it doesn't have a sequel or they didn't jump on board with it. Um, yeah. But to end uh, on Friday the 13th, of course, 
the big news earlier this year is they're going to try to come out with a series. I hope that uh, hurries along. Come yeah. on. Um, I really would enjoy um, – I I, I want to watch some shit. I want to watch Welcome to Dairy. I want to watch the Crystal Lake series. I want to watch these things that, um, you know, don't get us all wet and then not come fuck us. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm right there with you. I am clamoring for some new Jason in my life. It's been long enough. Um, it's been, God, we're not too long away from, what, 20 years? Well, what has kept us... Um, well, 2009, uh, was the last Jason film, which, um, it's 2023 now. So you add, uh, three, four, 14, maybe years. Um, what has kept us, what has kept it from not seeming that long is in between that we had the video game, which kind of gave us a little bit of Jason true, in our lives. True, true, true. So, and you know, Jason never dies. I mean, go to like like you mentioned earlier about uh, art. Yeah, uh, how Terrifier has shirts and stuff, and Spencer's and Hot Topic. Friday the Thirteenth shirts everywhere. There's hoodies right now of Friday the Thirteenth at Walmart. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like this is a forgotten franchise, or it's not no. like they don't have fans. We we want it, and um, you know we yeah, just, but we won't want it proper yeah we like want it proper. proper we don't want um david gordon green keep the fuck away from this yeah. and a24 keep the fuck away oh from this. my god please a24 leave jason alone don't you touch it leave Brittany alone leave jason alone leave jason alone you son of a bitch <laughs> anyway we get to anyway. your number one number dun, one dun, 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 dun. I, I think i can guess what it is Scream. It well, goddamn! You didn't even give me good a guess. Good guess. Yeah, and I think I know why. I think you're going to say because it's more consistent than any yes. franchise out there. A hundred percent. This well, franchise hits on all cylinders. Scream is on my list, so right. uh, never mind that it's not number one. Just know that it's on my list, so we're on the same page. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much touched on it earlier. Uh, mine's a little bit different. I I like Scream. One is my favorite, of course, because it sparked uh, the new slashers. It, it gave life to the lifeless. Um, part two, a lot of people love part two. I love part two also. But I like part three more than I like part two. It's just yeah, something about We're in the three. minority on that. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know that the majority don't like part three, which <laughs> blows my mind. I love. Okay, I know it's it's weird to say that I like the movie within the movie, even though I don't like Wes Craven's new nightmare. I feel like Wes Craven did it right with Scream Three, right? Um, and then we go into part four, which you know is a continuation and come to find out that it was like her cousin and the whole jealousy thing. And then you have Macaulay right. Culkin's brother in this movie and the, you know, pretty much kind of a throwback to the first one, the whole couples thing. And it, it was a great story. Wes Craven gave us four consistently back to back fucking home runs. Yeah. With, um, I, I mentioned this earlier, part four, was my uh, favorite, was my second favorite after the first one. Yeah. So, it, it, like I said, it, four it went, awesome. It went one, four, three, um, five, two, six. Or it yeah. might have been two, five, six. No, I, I think I said five, two, six. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Like I said earlier, um, I don't dislike any of these films. No. Um, they are consistent, um, even if we can poke holes at some of them. Yeah, like six. I guess my okay. This is the problem. A lot of people think that six is the second best one in the entire franchise. Well, they're entitled to be wrong, um, and then they're also entitled to their opinion, and that's fine. I personally have such high regards for the Scream franchise because the master 
Wes Craven gave us four masterpieces. Scream Five. It's it's five. I hate the fact that they called it Scream. I, they were trying to do that whole Halloween 2018 thing, and I hate that in itself. That's another rant for another day. Anyway, it was good. I would have liked to seen the uh, they call them the legendary characters uh, involved legacy legacy characters. Excuse me, uh, involved a little bit more. Uh, I felt like six. The legacy characters that they had in it, which was, uh, what's her name? Gail. Gail. Was okay, but, like, if you cut her out, it it doesn't change anything. Well, I think that... Really? <clears throat> I well, think... no, I take that back. She, she's the one that figured... I'm sorry, I had a brain for it. Um, but she should have been... I don't know, more heavily involved, so to speak. Well, I don't like the fact that she, um, I, <laughs> it's become a running gag, you know. If you're going to kill her, fucking kill her. If you're going to not use her, don't use her. If you're yeah. going to use her, use her. If she's going to survive, let her be a hero. Um, I, there's w- been I several- wish she would have died in five not Dewey. Well, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that yeah. David Arquette probably didn't want to do it anymore. Which is so, crazy. So, you know, it it is what it is. And plus, um, let's face it, his death affected us way more than Gales would have. So True. it was all about getting that emotional um, response from the crowd. Yeah. And, you know, it's cool to see Dewey, you know, dying at least he died in the movie that Sydney was in true and it was a brutal death yeah and it yeah it wasn't some chicken shit you know stab once and let me shut my eyes it was like no he was brutally fucking murdered right and that's the way it should be if we're gonna kill him let's fucking kill him and a lot of people there's two different ways you can look at that some people could say they disrespected him or some people could say no they gave him the most brutal death they possibly could, which is the ultimate sign of respect. I kind of right. go with the second one because when Same. I saw it, I I almost teared up a little bit because I grew up with the character in the movies. So right. whatever they were going for, it worked in my opinion. I uh, do agree as, with as that. far as uh, you know, getting the response. Right. Um, as far as six goes, I guess I was <sighs> I had expectations. Um, I don't care about, um, uh, ghost face using a shotgun, but it made sense, you know, because he was a cop. He was used to using guns and characters yeah. like that. And we've talked about that before, about how, um, every movie is a different killer. So, right. You know, some killers don't stick to the rules. Exactly. Art the clown looking at you. You my homeboy. Stay away from me. Um, Plus, with, like you said, he's a cop. Yeah, he's a cop. He, His main weapon is a fucking gun. Exactly. So he he's going to use a shotgun, a gun, whatever he's got. Probably probably not going to be uh, efficient with knives it, it's because he's a cop, which makes sense to me. I know some people don't get that, but I get that. There was three killers in part six. Yeah. And they were all family, family. members. Family. They know. were all family members. I don't know. It was stretching it, but it still wasn't bad. I like the setting. I will say that. Yeah, I like it in New York. It was uh, it was a good change of pace. I think it was needed. I do like the fact that Nev wasn't in it. I think her being in seven is crucial for the franchise. Uh, people are saying that seven is supposed to be the final movie in this franchise. Cool. If you do it, do it right. Uh, I was talking to you about this earlier. My plan that I would like to see executed is that Ghostface comes after Nev. That, that to me, is the best way of doing it. Do it like the first one. You, if this is truly the last one, that's fine. But I want to see Ghostface coming after Nev. Kill 
if you want to set it up, have her husband get killed, the uh, the officer in what part two she marries, I think. 